Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line on Wednesday night. Very good show tonight. We are talking all about Metro Schools. Today was a very important day because the director of schools and others went before the mayor and asked for a budget increase for next year. They discussed next year's budget. So we want to do that in detail here, give you a chance to call in, ask any question you may have about Metro Schools budget or anything else going on with Metro Schools. And we are very happy to have with us, once again, the Director of Schools, Dr. Jesse Register. Dr. Register, thank you for good being evening. with us. It's good to be here. And Chris Henson, Metro Schools CFO, Chief Financial Officer, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And so you were both in front of the mayor today. Yes. How do you feel it went? Uh, it was a good session, uh, about an hour, 15 minutes, I think, total uh, time involved, and uh, uh, a good, informative conversation. My, the mayor and his staff asked some good questions, and we had an opportunity to really present our priorities and present where we are with our budget. Chris is an award-winning budget prep preparation person year in and year out so he does a great job with it of dealing with the details and and I don't have to answer the details <laughs> because of that <laughs> and and this is a show where we can kind of delve into the details yeah. and I want to do that <clears throat> but there has been some talk about will Metro be able to fund the request that you're making um, certainly we covered this uh, this was a major story today. We want to show the story that Jason Lamb did, then we'll come back and talk about it. But this is the story Jason Lamb uh, did for the 4 o'clock newscast. Inside City Hall today began a major balancing act over how much money Metro Schools should get for its next budget. At issue is a $32.5 million increase in funding for Metro Schools. Today was an opportunity for the Director of Schools to defend the increases. We had a good opportunity to present our requests and to uh, uh, discuss in detail those priorities that are very important to us. Mayor Carl Dean has repeatedly warned about the difficult decisions he's going to have to make ahead. It's going to be a tight budget and I think one of the things you have to do is um, look at everything and and, and see how um, you can find some savings and then also see how you can move the programs that are working or new innovative ideas, let them go ahead. Register says the board's top priority is expanding pre-kindergarten programs, adding 340 new seats at a cost of 3.4 million dollars. We think that's very important in a district that has a high percentage of children who are low socioeconomic children who don't have opportunities for quality pre-k programs. Register and the Board of Education are also asking for a 2% pay raise for teachers. As a capital letter and... Something Dean says he can't commit to yet. Obviously there are going to be more requests for things that we're, that we're going to be able to meet. I'm not ruling it out. Uh, I'm just saying this is today was the budget hearing and now we go back and work on the budget for the next couple weeks. For now, it's for the mayor to decide what stays and what goes in the school's proposal to find a balance that works. You know, we're not going to make everybody happy, but the budget process never does. So Mayor Dean there saying that it's a tight budget year, it always is a tight budget year. How confident are you that you will get everything you're asking for? Well, we, d we don't know. I think that's a negotiation. Uh, we certainly hope so. And, and I want to give credit to Metro Council and Mayor Dean in the past years for really doing, for really making education a top priority in the in the county. Uh, we've had good increases over the over the past few years, and but also a lot of challenges. We don't have everything we need. Uh, we, there are things that we want to do. We have priorities, and so. So uh, it's, a, it's a conversation that will take place over the next two months, really. If, if you were not to get everything, how would you go about trimming things? Now, this is a tough question, but <clears throat> is there something in the several things you're asking for that you would just eliminate, or have you thought about that, or what, and, and either one of you can take this, what would you start eliminating? Well, uh, I'll, I'll respond and, and get Chris to respond too, but uh, I think it's uh, it, it's a mistake to prematurely say we would do this or that when when we don't know what the allocation is going to be. I think uh, when the when the mayor makes a recommendation, uh, then we have to adjust if it's not as much as we ask for, and that, and and a lot of that adjustment depends on the amount that's being suggested that we will get. So it's it's I, I don't believe in putting out a cut list, if you will. Uh, it's premature to do that. Uh, 
Mr. Pinkston, our, the uh, chair of our budget and finance committee, said today that he would support an across-the-board cut uh, to the increases that we had proposed. And, uh, uh, you know, that's one possibility, but, but I, I would not want to be more specific than that until we knew exactly where we stood. Uh, I'm certainly, I, I, I have, uh, I think the priorities that we've stated are very important. I think it is the right direction for us to take, and I hope that we'll be able to find a way to fund the requests that we've made. So, Will Pinkston said instead of cutting out one of the things you're asking for, just cut everything equally, an across-the-board cut. Right. And that's just um, up for debate, obviously. It may right. not even have to happen. Let's go over the priorities. Chris Henson, what are the things you're asking for in this $32.5 million? Sure. And uh, in summary, um, the first thing is we're talking about a, a 2% across the board pay raise for all of our employees. And I think Dr. Register has said many times um, that Metro Schools isn't the easiest place to work and teach, but we want to make it the best place. And uh, we want the best teachers in our classroom. And so to be able to both recruit and retain the best teachers, we need to offer a competitive salary. And so we feel like a 2% raise is, is pretty modest, uh, but that's one of our priorities, obviously. Uh, and, and before you move on, I think that's important. So a 2% raise, now we just saw that the governor and the state were wanting to give a raise to teachers, but they've had to back off that. How does the fact that the state is backing off what it said it would do for teachers, how does that impact Metro's budget? It impacts it on the revenue side. We, we will not receive the additional allocation, revenue allocation from the state for that proposed, initially proposed, 2% raise for teachers. And so it reduces the, the amount of revenue that we're going to receive, we estimate we're going to receive from the state through its funding formula. Um, but. Uh, Dr. Register uh, will say we feel like it's important enough that, that we wanted to put it uh, in our proposal and keep it in our proposal even though at the state level uh, through the amended budget it was taken out. That so was something on, that would have been covered? I mean state funds would have really helped offset that? Or would that, it have been a 4 percent raise? Or It's actually partially offset by some revenue from the state. The way that the state funding formula works is there is a required local match and so we would have re partially received some funds funding for that raise, but then we also would have had to come up with additional money out of local revenue to cover the rest of it. So now if the state is not going to be doing that or proposing that, we're going to have to cover all of it from local sources. And did you want to add but to more, that? Yes, well I was just going to say that, that more of the uh, cost for a raise like that comes from local budget than from state budget. So it's a, a only a percentage. Uh, that, that of revenue that we'll lose for the for the total cost of the increase, and I want to say also that our proposal is two percent across the board for teachers, but also support employees. Uh, we've not given uh, this will be the second year that we haven't recommended uh, step increases for years experience. So this is the cost of living. This is the only increase that that teachers and support employees would see. And that's seven point four million of the thirty two. Uh, proposed increase, 7.4 million. So where, what's the rest? Well, 7.4 million covers the, the cost of the teacher raise. There's another 2 million uh, for our support employees to give them the 2% raise. So the total cost of the raise is 9.4 million. Uh, we also have uh, benefit increases as far as insurance and pension costs that come to us. Uh, uh, most of those we don't really have any control over. They're either the, the state pension plan or the metro government uh, pension plan and, and insurance plan. So we have those built into the increase as well. Um, we have some new initiatives that we're proposing uh, that uh, we feel like uh, will increase student achievement and uh, those were the major points of emphasis we tried to make uh, today and also when we were discussing it with the Board of Education. Uh, we have increases for the growth in our charter schools. We will open three new charter schools this coming year and we will have growth uh, in existing charter schools that are adding additional grades. And so so that is a, a transfer of funds from our operating budget to the charter schools themselves based upon their enrollment. And that's a $14.7 million number. That's the largest single line item. It is. The charter schools. It is. So that's interesting. And then $3.4 million for pre-K. And this has been yes. a very important um, issue for you. <coughs> Uh, yeah, let's so, talk about that. Three point yeah. four million. Well, it's uh, it's it's my top priority in the budget. That and that and teacher salaries and one other thing. But uh, we uh, we uh, the the 
U.S. Department of Education is supporting growth of pre-K four-year-old programs, basically for children who need it, and uh, and we uh, we think that's very important. Uh, we know the state's not moving forward with the increasing funding there, but uh, but we think for Davidson County, for the children we serve here in Davidson County, it's probably as high a return on investment as we could make. Um, and um, the the we serve we know that we serve less than 50% of the children in Davidson County who need and want a program. Uh, and for English learners, for children who are uh, coming from low socioeconomic status, low income families, for underserved children, uh, it, it makes a tremendous difference. But, but I, think, I think we need to go even further and say that we, the research is becoming more and more apparent now, the, the more sophisticated the research is, that a quality four-year-old program for all children who need it and want it make, will make a, a lasting difference in whether they're successful in school or not, whether they finish high school, what their attendance is like, whether they have behavior problems, their academic achievement, all of those things are positively effective. And, uh, and we feel like that's just extremely important for the children we serve. And that kind of gives you an overview of the things that you're asking for. And we can delve yeah. into all of that more. You can ask questions about that. But I know you were cognizant of the fact that there had I mean, some people would say there was friction at some point between the mayor and the school board. School, schools have received large increases at times when other departments have been cut. When you, when you hear talk about friction, how did that um, play into the request that was finally put before the mayor? And would you agree that there was friction? or, or Just how did, that, how did all that play? Well, we, 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 it's, it's, uh, public education is a very large and complex uh, issue and a very big part of local government here in Davidson County as it is in, in most places and we're not ever going to agree on everything. We need to understand that and there, there are a couple of areas where where there were some disagreements this year but but, uh, but that's okay. You know we're, uh, we've, had, we've had good conversations, constructive conversations about those differences I think and uh, one thing that we did this year with, uh, uh, with the Board of Education uh, leading this was to begin conversations about our budget very early. Uh, we started we started back in the fall, uh, not long after school started, really trying to get get to the substance of what we want to do and where our priorities are. Uh, I'll go back a little bit, for, just a little bit further than that. We have a new strategic plan. I think we've talked about that on the program before. This budget reflects the priorities in that new strategic plan. So it's pre-K programs, serving, increasing the number of seats, but also the quality of programs. Um, we, we are in 57 schools, but there's also Head Start that serves pre-K uh, children, four-year-olds, three and four-year-old children. There's also pri there are also private providers. And we want to look at the quality of service across the county. Uh, what we're proposing is to build three model centers. Uh, to serve underserved children, uh, to serve diverse children, uh, and uh, and to create centers of best practice so that we can spread the best practice across the, the entire county. I see we have a couple calls, so hold okay. on the line, and then we will take those calls. If you want to call in, line's open 737-plus, 737-7587. We will take a break. Be back right after this.